Bandelier National Monument in northern New Mexico encompasses more than 33,000 acres with 70 miles of hiking trails. Laced with incredible cliff face cave dwellings, the park is one of the Southwest's most enchanting canyon Puebloan sites. I'm your host, travel correspondent Tom Wilmer. Come along and join Rod Torres, National Park Ranger and Chief of Interpretation at Bandelier National Monument, where he shares his passionate insights into this most spectacular and mesmerizing destination. Rod Torres. My name is Rod Torres. I'm a park ranger at Bandelier National Monument. My title is Chief of Interpretation. Thank you for joining us. Tell us, number one, for the listener, exactly where Bandelier is. Bandelier is in northern New Mexico. It's about an hour drive north of Santa Fe. We're located in the Jemez Mountain Range. There's something very special about this place and unique. Tell us the outstanding attributes. There are a lot of draws here. Number one, the first thing that strikes you is the beauty of the place. When you're coming through this area, it's a series of canyons and mesas. You'll come down into one of the canyons and see this beautiful long canyon leading up to some mountain tops. That's the heart of Bandelier, Frijoles Canyon. In my how long roughly would that canyon be? The canyon is roughly about 10 miles long from river to the head of the canyon. The place where people generally visit, where some of the ancestral Pueblo people lived, is about six miles from the head of the canyon. The depth from the bottom of canyon to top is incredible distance too. Yes, if you think about the very top of the mountain at at the top of the Jemez Range, all the way to the Rio Grande, there's about a mile in elevation change. The main area of the canyon here is cut into stone 900 feet thick. Give us a word picture of the in situ evidence of occupation here. The signature Pueblo in Frijoles Canyon is a circular structure of stone made of 200 rooms that, when it was inhabited, was two to three stories tall in places. There were three kivas, round ceremonial rooms, built into the earth in the center of the Pueblo and also a large plaza. So you have a circular ring of stones, a gridwork of rock, and people lived there raising turkeys, farming. They they had domesticated dogs. It was a lively place along Bubbling Creek. It's agrarian based as well as hunter gatherer to a point? Yes, people did hunt and they also farmed. So there was quite a mixture of activities going on in the Pueblo when it was inhabited. Earliest archaeological evidence of habitation here in Bandelier. Well, the earliest evidence of people at Bandelier is a Clovis point. You can actually see in our visitor center, it's a stone point that indicates that people may have been here 10,000 years ago. Habitation was continuous or fluid and in and out? It fluctuated quite a bit. Periods of different kinds of weather, drought, wet weather, um, that might change things here. People might use up their resources and then move on to another location. So we find long stretches of history where people lived in different places throughout Bandelier, which is 33,000 acres, a pretty large area. Something happened, though, sometime around the, what, the 1500s, there was an exodus? Well, around the 1500s, we think the last people who inhabited Frijoles Canyon finally moved away. It could have been a drought, could have been a uh, because they used a lot of their resources, maybe the farming played out. And so they moved closer to the river, to Pueblos that are now close to some of the modern-day Pueblos. And those modern-day Pueblos claim ancestry to Bandelier. So this was continuous over the years, Puebloan in occupation and not Navajo. Exactly. The ancestral Pueblo people lived here for centuries and relatively undisturbed by conflict based on evidence that we can find. So a real stable agrarian culture. 
give us some examples of some of the interesting evidence that's been unearthed through archaeological digs here and when some of the first archaeological expeditions took place here. Around the, the turn of the 20th century, there was a lot of activity in this area. Bandelier National Monument is named for Adolf Bandelier, who came here, he met with the Kochidi people, and he told them that he wanted to find places uh, where there were archaeological sites. They brought him here because this is where they claim ancestry. He and subsequent archaeologists have discovered wonderful evidence of cultures here. You know, one of the things that I just held in my hands a few days ago at a, at a site in Tucson where we store some of our artifacts was a turkey blanket, a blanket made of turkey feathers woven with yucca fiber, discovered here at Bandelier, a very rare thing to find something organic mm. preserved in, in the earth. This was in a cave? Uh, it was uh, out of one of the, the caveats, yes. And any idea of its age, how old it was? I'm not certain how old that was. Certainly it would have been at least 600 years wow. old. We have caveats, uh, which are rooms carved out of the canyon walls, not natural caves, but, but hand-carved rooms where people lived. And often in those caveats, we find artifacts, anything from pottery to sacred objects like bone flutes. Lots of stone points throughout the area have been discovered. At its height of occupation, what are the estimates of population density here? Well, in Frijoles Canyon, which is the main site where people visit, we can imagine 800 people living here in a relatively small area, just maybe a couple of square miles. And it was a lively place. People lived here, and, and I can imagine just hearing the sounds of children playing dogs barking, the, the turkeys out in the fields. So it must have been a, a real vibrant culture living here. Any evidence and myth and legend of trade and communication between other Pueblo and communities? Well, yes, there's a lot of evidence of other Pueblos communicating with people here or even traveling through here. The Zuni, five hours away by car from Bandelier, also claim ancestry to this place. This is part of their migration story. In the visitor center, visitors can see painting by a Zuni artist that depicts the migration story. Bandelier is very important to them. They come here every year to dance. Rod, tell us, how long have you been here, number one? I've been in the Southwest my whole life. Bandelier, I just started working here just a year ago, and I work with staff members, who some of whom have worked here for over 30 years. It's wonderful to have people who have worked here so long because you get a real, you know, you have people with a lot of knowledge base of the story and the people who have lived here and the people who still live in the area, the Pueblos who come here, who consider this part of their story, part of their life, part of their home. Tell us a little bit about what you can experience here. I mean, here we are, we are in the middle of a hike up the canyon, overlooking a circular community of houses or the, the wreckage thereof. Above your shoulder is a cliff with cliff dwellings, with actual wooden ladders that you can climb up the cliffs and into these caves. The caveats, to me, are a real signature piece of bandolier. You don't see rooms like this everywhere. They're carved out of the canyon wall. They're one of the most special sites in the park is Alcove House. It's about a mile up the canyon from the visitor center. It's 140 feet up the canyon wall. You climb a series of ladders to get there. It's a small pueblo built into a recess in the cliff and there's a reconstructed kiva up there. This is one of the few archaeological sites where you can actually go in and see these rooms up close. Well, you know, I was going to say, I have been to a lot of ancestral sites throughout the Southwest, Arizona and New Mexico. And to tell you the truth, I cannot remember going to one where there was a wooden indigenous sort of ladder that you were allowed to climb up. This is incredible. Isn't this truly rare? It is truly rare. There are very few places where you can actually climb ladders and, and enter ancient rooms. And I think that this place is special because of that. It's a very intimate experience being in Frijoles Canyon because you're right up close with the history and with the Pueblo people who claim ancestry living so close 
by, they often come to visit. So you really get a sense that this isn't just a place that was, it's a place that is. It's a place that people enjoy to this day, feel ancestry to, feel kinship with. It's a wonderful place to live. It's a wonderful place to visit. During the year, is there a time when the Pueblo and nearby Pueblo people come here and sing and dance and put on performances? Throughout the summer on weekends, we'll have people coming to exhibit their traditional arts and uh, demonstrate their artwork for people and very approachable, very fun to talk to. Also, we have usually a feast or two every year here in the Park of Festival where even the Zuni will come up from Zuni. They'll dance behind the visitor center. During the fall, we have our highest visitation during the Balloon Festival in Albuquerque. People come up here, Pueblo artists, come exhibit their work. We have an oven, a traditional orno. It's a beehive shaped clay oven and women come from some of the Pueblos and cook oven bread and it fills the canyon mm. with the scent of fresh baked bread. It's, it's gorgeous. It's wonderful. This is great. If you were to meet somebody, a friend down south say in Albuquerque and they had not been here, why would you tell them to come? You know, what are kind of the outstanding, oh my gosh, you have to come to see? Number one, Bandelier is an unexpected landscape in New Mexico. On the one hand, you have the mountains above, you have these beautiful canyons with pine trees and cottonwoods growing up along the creeks. Just its sheer beauty is striking. And then the sense that people have lived here for centuries. The evidence is everywhere. And, you know, there's petroglyphs carved into canyon walls. There's Pueblo structures. There's cavates all along the canyon, uh, hundreds mm. of cavate rooms. What are some of the most fascinating and intriguing rock art images that you've seen that start you thinking? My favorite is not far from the visitor center on the main loop trail. It's a petroglyph of a macaw. Mm. And why would there be a macaw petroglyph in New Mexico? It just immediately tells the story of trade, that it wasn't isolated. People were not isolated here, just like they're not isolated today. They communicated miles and miles. And that means you're talking about communication with Central America, all the way down maybe Nicaragua. We're talking, yes, trade going. There were trade routes that, that went all the way south into, yeah, into cent Mexico and, and Central America. And so objects worked their way up here. And Bandelier had its own things to trade, especially obsidian. Some of the finest obsidian in the world comes from the volcano that created the plateau that this canyon cuts into. Mm -hmm. And we find bandolier obsidian all throughout the Americas. Wow. So from here, they traded right back in reverse to pay for their macaw. <laughs> That's exactly right. So we find traditional macaw feathers in archaeological sites here and down in Mexico. They find bandolier obsidian. I love it. Rod, this has been a pleasure. Thank you. I'm Rod Torres, park ranger at Bandelier National Monument. For further information about Bandelier, visit our website, www.nps.gov slash B-A-N-D, or friend us on Facebook. We're NPS Bandelier. Love it. Rod Torres, National Park Ranger, thank you so much. This has been great. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing people come to the park. All right. This is your host, Tom Wilmer, reporting for National Public Radio Affiliates, KCBX serving San Luis Obispo County, KSBX serving Santa Barbara County, and KNBX serving Southern Monterey County, reporting from New Mexico. If you'd like to listen to this show, or the entire series on northern New Mexico travel destinations. You may do so anytime on the web as MP3 podcasts. Log on to www.kcbx.org, click on Program Archives at the home page, and then click on Audio Log the Travel Show. You're listening to the award-winning travel show Audio Log, airing over these NPR affiliates for the past 20 years. I'm your host, Tom Wilmer. The music you're listening to was performed by Perla Batala on her Discoteca Batala album. The intro music was performed by Carlos Nakai. Mm -hmm.